If you're going to understand the bloodline, you have to trace it through the woman, not through the man. Because we can't, we may drop a sperm, but we can't show who dropped the sperm before us or after us. And so you can assure, be assured that what comes out of that woman's womb belongs to that woman. And so it's through that way you trace the lineage of the family. And that way you trace the lineage of the royalty, of those who are proclaimed royalty um, based on spiritual reasons in almost all cases. And so that's what I meant by matrifocal. So take Ghana, for instance, and take the Ashanti nation. The king is called the Asantehene. Um, and he derives on that throne, not from his mother's womb or his father, who's the king, because that will cause too much disruption. That will lead to envy and jealousy and fighting between the brothers who are going to take the throne. So the next king is going to come from one of the sisters of the king. But nobody knows who that is because they will train all the children to be the one. Only when the time comes will the best of all the children be chosen by the women and then recommended and sent to the men to be raised to be the king of those people. That's matrifocal. And in Africa, the woman has the power of the throne. And this has always been the case. The throne symbolized the power of the community. So going back all the way to Kemet, what's sitting on the head of a set? The throne, the chair, meaning the power. But she gives that to the man in form of the authority. The woman of the community said, we got the power. But we have to raise the next generation. So we're going to give you the authority to run the social order. Matrifocal. That's matrifocal. The woman represents the power in Africa. The man represents the authority in Africa. That authority is granted to you by the woman because the woman have a responsibility with her power to recreate the next generation. It's, it's disrupted extraordinarily but it's still maintained at the village level, especially. It's maintained throughout the society in some degree. But of course, Christianity and Islam and uh, military dominance disrupts it because now you're going to determine who's going to be the king or who's going to be the chief in denial of the African process. Now, that didn't work in everywhere. The Africans managed to maintain their system in most of Africa, but the system lost the authority of society to the man with the gun, okay? But the power still lie in the hands of the woman to present the man as the authority, to deal with the man with the gun, you know? But that's coming back now. As we've removed the man with the gun, we have to deal with his Negro collaborators with the gun. And so we're beginning to move them out of the way and bringing back the authority of how to manage and rule an African community based on a Ma'atan principle that is granted by the women. And what I mean granted, the women could be there competing with the men for it, but rather they said, listen, we got stuff we supposed to do that y'all just can't do. And as I raise the next generation based on the compassion and the laws of nature that will produce a healthy human being, that's a feminine phenomena. You're a manager. So we're going to let you manage. We're going to give you the authority to manage uh, the, the community. But we gave you that authority. We can take that authority away from you. And so the way the, the rules and the sum of them place, even if the king, like in Nigeria, the Oni of Ife, who's the king of all the Yorubas in the world, if he does wrong and his mama come out in front of that castle and rip her bra and put a breast to bear, everybody know his life, his king is done. He's finished with that one act on the part of his mama or any other woman of authority and, and eldership.